Clock in my hand, grinding hard, paper stacking, trying to follow the plan. Pulling plots and schemes, chasing million dollar dreams. Living a thug life, I get it by any means. When times get hard, I got no one to hold me down. So I ride with a top down and cruise around time. The boppers in line, cause I've been known to be a slab rider. Coming down clean, marching like a freedom fighter. Morning, fellas. What the way to work? Wake up to man, maintenance man. Came back, you know, recovered from the trip, man. 1990 miles. Came to inspect the trailer, good. Found out I had a seal leak, man. So I done broke the tires down and stuff, man. Um, finna break it apart, man. Let's do it, man. Y'all did it with me before, so let's ride with me, man. It's all part of the game, man. I just about to put this video out. I'm finishing up a few finished touches on it. And I'm going to set it on out there for y'all, man. But this started a new video, man. Love maintenance. Love maintenance. I got it broke down. Took the first bearing out. Don't look that bad. I'm looking at the oil. If you look at the oil, man, you see it's kind of little. You can see the little shavings and a little oil in there, man. So need to clean it up real good. I'm going to look at that race. I always look at your races, the cones that your bearings sit in real good. Some people say it's always a good time to change it, man, but... I'm going to inspect them and see if they don't got no abrasions or something on them. I'm going to keep them. So stay tuned. Take it off. Took it off, and this is what I got, man. A big mess, man. It's going to take me a while to clean all this up, man. Clean this all up real good. Got to get all this off, man. Stay tuned. What up, fellas? Cleaning my bearings. They still good, man. Got some brake clean. I'm cleaning them up. Raping them out, working all the, getting the old oil out, inspecting them real good, man. But they still good, man. So I'm going to slap them in there, back in there, man. So money tight. We ain't buying no more. I got some extra ones, but these still good. So I'm slapping them back in there, man. Cleaning up the axle, man. I got, this the hardest part, man. I'm going to put some pictures in, man. This thing was gooey. Get you some brake cleaner. Spray it all in there. Get you some good shop towels and clean it out real good your races and everything. I gotta change one race. That's why I say inspect everything good, man. Put all your stuff back in good, man. Make sure it's running. So, part of the game, man. Maintenance, man. Like I say, cleaning them back up to new looking. Slap them back in, man. Peace out. What's happening, man? I got my little soldier with me. Tell him what's up, champ. Hello. Talk right, boy. Hello's up. Hello. <laughs> Hey, man, he out here learning, man. Out here, I just showed him how to knock the cone out, man. So you can look at this. I don't know if I can get there and see all the, the fine play I got a champ. You can see the, all the scratches and dentures in the inside of the cone. This is what your bearing sit inside of. See, this is what your bearing sits in and rolls, man. And this one got a lot of play, man, a lot of toe, so I'm going to have to change it out, man. They say it's best always to change them out in pairs, man, but that's probably what I do. I got a new bearing. I might just go and slap a new bearing and keep that one. The other one, for a safe time, cleaned it up real good. It's still good, so I'll slap a new one in there. Stay tuned, man. Hey, fellas, a good idea to, to protect your good seal, man. You take the old seal. I got to do to make me a seal driver. This right here, man, knock the races out, everything. This fit right. Watch this. Right in here. Fit right in here like this, man. And then you can just easily put it back over there. Another thing, man. You don't want to hit these too hard, man. You don't want to hit these too hard, man. Because you get to hitting these too hard, you bust the seal before you have it in there. You, I know, I don't know if somebody ever did it. As soon as you put the seal in there, you come back and you uh, put the oil and you're leaking. That's because you hit it too hard and hit it off center. And that's a good seal driver, man. Dude charged $20 to make them at the shop, man. It's at the trailer shop, man. They make a pullet, too, man, which is good to have, too, man. You got to keep this kind of stuff with you on the road, man. Stay tuned. Let me knock this one in and show you how it look. Now I got to clean all this up, man. Clean this up real, real good, man. I got some, brought some gas and some towels and some brake cleaner, man. Get all that real clean. And yeah, put it back together, man. 
Stay tuned. I'm going to get it, man. But you can see the big difference from when it was. Cleaned it up real good. Sprayed it out with brake cleaner, man. Hey, I clean it with some gas, but I come back with the brake cleaner and really flush it all out. Try to wipe all that gas off it, man. I really don't like using gas on this kind of stuff, but that was the stuff to really get it clean when it's real bad. So, just a tip, H2O. Fellas, I got everything back together. Cat eyes on. Not leaking. Stick my thing right there. So, what I'm doing, I'm turning it. I put some hub oil in it, and I'm turning it. Not fast, but just turning it. And I'm, what I'm doing is letting that oil seep to the back on them bearings and stuff. And then I'm going to let it sit for a while while I'm checking all the other hubs. While I'm at it, man, it's the boy moving slow, so might well complete all my maintenance, man, and uh, go from there. But uh, that's what I've got going on, man. Let it sit for a while, recheck it, top it back off, man. You want your line, they got a little line right here, man, you know. You don't want it right at the top. I put mine a little bit under the top, man, on my oil. You can see that oil is selling in, so it's getting way to the back. I'm going to let it sit for a while, let it do all what it's going to do, and then I'll be able to see my true level, man. Peace. You don't want to overfill it neither, man. Put too much pressure on the bearing. Peace. Topped it back off. That's about where I want it. That's cool now. Peace. Now I'm on the next axle. I done jacked it up. Check to take both your hands, one at the top, one at the bottom. They try to rock it. See if you got any play. If you got any play, then you back this cotter pin out and you tighten up your bearing all the way tight as you can get it and you back it off again. Just enough to put your hole back in and check your play again. Shouldn't be no play. You know what I'm saying? And, um, Drain the oil. I got my trailer set, man. I would have kind of went over, man. I done put actually 20,000 miles since I drained this last time. So I always check it, put a little fresh dab of oil in there, but I'm draining it all the way out. Inspecting the oil. I don't see no really shavings or nothing, man. But you know, going through a lot of water, mud, and dirt, man. Something probably seeps in there, but this actually oil actually really looks good. I'm just going to drain it, pour it out, refill it with some fresh oil. So I'm confident and got a good, like I say, peace of mind knowing that I'm ready to rock, man. I always be ready to roll, man. It's all about the maintenance, man. I hope y'all liking the, our part of the game. There's a lot of things we go through, man. You know, while this draining, man, what I want to say, man, hey, it's about to be winter. It's time to winterize kind of your trailer, man. And what I mean by that, you know, sometimes seasonal, I change my, uh, I changed my breakaway battery, you know what I'm saying? If you just changed it, I wouldn't, but it's been a couple months, six, seven months, man, just to be safe, or just buy you one. Sometimes I just go and change it and keep the spare off and know it was still good for extra. Another thing, man, on your connectors with your lights and stuff like that, man, you know, go back, disconnect them, get you some electrical grease, put a little dab of fresh electrical grease in them, push them back in, man, because if you're traveling in that snow and salty weather and rainy, man, Eventually that uh way out of uh connectors out, but if you got some uh, electrical grease it'll make it go a lot longer, man. So another thing, man, um y'all boys uh I'm gonna say uh sitting out here at the yard man, but uh so y'all something else man, the scenery but just watching this drain. But another thing man, um what I wanna say uh what I'm going to say, uh, snow chains, man, you know, snow chain law is in effect, going through like out all on the 7 in Colorado, stuff like that, man, and Utah, all that kind of places like that, so Wyoming, man, so if you're going to travel in that kind of weather, man, you need to get you some snow chains, man, they got a place called Snow Chain USA and all that, man, so I'm going to find the website directly where I got mine from. And all you do is give them your tie size. Like, I got 235, 85, 16 on the trailer. So I get one set for the trailer, and then I get a set for the back of the trailer. I just put them on one on a dually, just one wheel, one of the outside wheels, and uh, on the trailer, the outside wheel. You know what I'm saying? So you just give them your tie size and whatever, and uh, they'll get you the right, correct chain. They're not too expensive, man. I got, I think I paid 100 bucks a piece 
a pair. So I paid 200 for and a pair for the trailer and a pair for the uh, truck, man. And to tell you the truth, the other pair I had a couple years ago, I used them. I threw them away because I forgot to treat them. But I got a new pair I haven't even put on yet. So just got them sitting in the truck, man. You got to have them on you, too, man. You get pulled over, even if it's not snow chain law in effect, DOT pull you over, you got to have it or you get a ticket, man. So just a little H2O, a little reminder, man. A lot of y'all probably already know, but just a little shout out. I was just thinking about all that. You know, getting your truck ready for winter, man. Make sure your tires and stuff straight, man. Try to do a lot of your maintenance for it get icy cold and all that. You don't want to be on the, under your trail and all this bad conditions, man. And ice and stuff. Trust me, I didn't did it before. Break. Check all your brake lines and stuff, man. If they look kind of fishy, check them out, man. Redo them or something, man. Let's get ready. Stay tuned. What's happening, man? But one of them days you don't want to really do nothing, you didn't plan on doing nothing, man. Hey, they call you for a low, man. But hey, you got to go make the money, man. A little bit of money these days. Well, back in the day, you used to jump because the race was so good. But boy, I tell you, these days, man, the race is bad, man. It don't put no fire in me, man. I'm telling you, no, it don't put no fire in me, man. But, uh... You gotta do what you gotta do, man. I'm uh, going to get loaded at this place called Integrity. I'm gonna pull up in a second. And, uh, hope you guys here and ready, man. Take it down there to West Texas, man. To Midland. Supposed to drop it in the morning, man. So, real little ride. Bad thing about it, call you the middle of the day, it's two o'clock. Uh, say it's two o'clock and you don't want to get there too early, have to just you know, really camp out, man. So decide what I'm gonna do. I might go back home, man, and uh a couple hours, man. I was just finna finish cooking all my prep meal, so I'm gonna see what I do. I might roll. It just depends, man. See, I gotta see how long and make sure these people got the tools ready, man. We'll see. Stay tuned. Let's see how about it. Man, I got fuel. Got loaded. Got some fuel. Head not, man. Going through Huntsville, Texas, man. Oh, Y'all pull it up on the big Sam Houston statue, man. A lot of people out here taking pictures of it. They can see big white, obviously. Man. But, uh, here now, I decided to go on leave out. Get a little jump start, man. Probably gonna pull over and, uh, weather for a few hours and chill at the truck stop, man. Probably watch a little college football or something. Probably watch a little evening, the late night game in college football. Then when he go out, go ahead and cruise on, man. Just depends, man. I'm playing by the hill. See how things go, man. I just didn't feel like going back home and starting back over. Once I leave out, I don't like to go back home and have to come back out again and leave out. Unless it'd have been just early, too early in the morning, like, you know, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, load up, something like that. But, already 3.30, man, so go ahead and just roll, man. Roll with the punches. Yeah. Wanted to talk to that one. I talked the other day, man. I ran into uh, Baker. Yeah, that was what about pronounced for the L's, man. At the uh, Buckets, man. He was like, hey, that's bro, yo. I'm like, yeah, that's me, man. He didn't want to get on the, on the uh, video, man, but I didn't respect it. But yeah, I ran into it, man. Shout out to him, man, and his peeps. Said he be watching us, man. Watching the, watching the thing, man. Got a few things, man. I hope y'all uh, looked into some of them books I put. Dave Ramsey, a few other books, man. Got a few other books, man. I was going to pull out the arsenal, man, and share with you, man. They got one called Rich Dad Poor Dad, 
and Corporation, man, show y'all about the fitness structures, the good and the bad. That's a good book, too, man. Like I said, a lot of these books, man, rather most of them is on your Play Store. You can download Audible. Most of them, like Verizon, is already on your phone. And you pay, a, you pay like a couple dollars for the book, man, and you have it on there, and you can listen to it as you go down the road, man, or whatever, you on the hard copy. Or they buy the Amazon, or the Barnes and Nobles and stuff, man. But I'm rolling, man, getting on down the road, man. Probably, I'll do a, uh, load check. I'll give y'all a uh, few of the load, man. Number about four motors, man. They too. Stop. I hear an, uh, I think this brother for Texas, man. A little load I got. Man, that boy, that's neat, huh? What's up, fella? I'm out here doing about Dr. Otto, stretching my legs, man. Walking around, checking the load. I checked it earlier. At the truck stop, man, but I'm gonna get around, check. Nice little rest dairy out here in Texas, man. Other side of Weatherford. Man, I'll tell you one thing, too, man. You get out your truck out here in Texas, man, these rest areas. Hey, man, you gotta be looking for these snakes, man. Texas got rattlesnakes real bad. Cotton moths, man. You gotta be real careful, man. Trees, everything, man. Look up. Look around you. Checking everything out, man. I'll get back. I'm gonna pressure wash these wheels real good, man. Old Prime right here, man. And YTTA Bob, he rolling in that Prime. Everything looking good, though, man. Check that seal. I fixed everything. Was Still tight, so like I say, I'm at a rest there, rocking around the trail a few times, stretching, and getting that blood flow going. It's hard for me to stop. Man. Peace out, y'all be cool. What's up, man? Got lucky. I'm getting loaded. Get unloaded early. They had a, a motor that blew up in the hole, so they couldn't leave it on the dude truck right here. So they had to uh, bring it out to the yard. So shit, I'm gonna get unloaded early. Two something in the morning. Woke me out of my sleep, but guess what? I'm getting unloaded. Back up. Do what I gotta do with my log and stuff. Probably give me two more hours of sleep and push it on in, man. Push it on back. I already unstrapped it, slap them off, fix my boards, go back to sleep, get back on it. Are you asleep in there? Man, I was in there knocked out, man. They told me about, I told the uh, guy to let you know probably about 6 o'clock, he called you about 6 or 7. Uh, yeah. Get them off me, baby. Get them off me, man. That's what I'm talking about. Get the other two up. I'm out of here. No backhaul. What's up, fella? Want to go over some of the Bluetooth, man. A lot of y'all um, get into the trucking, man. Get these truck of Bluetooth, man, for the noise cancellation and stuff, man. Most common you see is like these blue parrots, man. You know, you get them like for a hundred dollars. It's the newest one. 109. Man, I got the one right here for 79, but it used to be the hundred and something. And I still got it today. It's beat up and everything. <laughs> but I don't use, I use that or the Bluetooth on the uh, truck. You know, they got some other kind, but man, they get a good noise cancellation, and you can get, you know, worse through your phone, all the stuff, man. 
Another thing I want to touch base as well, that's the prices of the truckers GPS, man. You got the Garmin. You know what I'm saying? The Garmin, you got the Ram McNally. That's the tablet for like about 449. And you got the seven inch, the five inch. But these some good uh, GPSs, man. Get the lifetime updates, so you don't have to worry about paying for nothing. And then I want to thing I want to touch on, man. I don't know if people know about it, but um, radar detectors is illegal, man. And CDL calls, man. You cannot have no radar detector, man. It's a big ticket, man. And some of the some of the converters, man. But like for our one-ton trucks, man, you have to uh, get some extra batteries, man. Cause if you put one of these big boys on there on the regular two batteries, man, you gonna have some problems, man. So. Probably want to find a way to mount a third battery or something, man. Or some bigger juice batteries or some kind of way or some gels. And here go the dash cams, man, I be talking about, man. You know, some little investments, man. That's why I say it's a few little things. Like I say, the converters and the dash cam and, you know, these GPSs, man. I want to say that's some just goodies. I want to say, uh, won'ts. But to get started in the business, if you just low on funds, you can kind of work around it. But you're going to need a good GPS. If you're, Most trucks today, if you get a new truck, got a navigation, but uh, your phone or something. But like I say, you got to watch certain areas and look at the maps for low bridges and all that, man. But that dash cam important, man. Like I said, I got my GoPro up, man, because if something happened, man, you want to kind of protect yourself, man. So, but, uh... I'm on the way back in, man. Getting ready to listen to this football, man. Got a, about 30 minutes for kickoff, so. But I got my foot on it, man. I should try to make it home by 4.30. I don't plan to stop at baby one, so. Grab a little lunch, listen to the game, a little something, man. Try to grab something healthy, man. I didn't get a chance to fix my, uh, prep meals, man, so I was in the midst when they called me, so I just keep trucking, man. Deal with it. I'm finding something to eat, man. So I'm trying to get something helping. I don't know, man. Stay tuned. It's not going to have any, but you don't take them away. What's happening, man? Well, I tell you, man, it blew up today. Arizona killed my ticket, man. Man, over cold. Damn Arizona, man. Hey, any given Sunday, man. Never know who's gonna win, man. I'm on the way back in, man. Probably got about, oh, 100 and something miles before I touch ground. 109 miles before I touch ground, man. Three o'clock game finna come on, man. I got uh, the Rams, Pittsburgh, Jets, San Diego, and Dallas. That's my four pick, man. Now that's a five pick, man. Man, my brother done put that together, man. Dang it, man, I need to hit, man. Christmas coming around the corner, I need to hit, man. Hit the bucket, man. But uh, I just do it for a little pastime, man. I don't never wage nothing big, man. Little past time. If I win, I win. Shit, I probably win once or once or twice a season. It makes up for all the gambling I do and stuff, man. So same thing. Lugging like a mug, man. It's a bumpy road, man. But it's 45 traffic. It's bumper to bumper. We rolling 65, but man, we bumper to bumper, man. Man, it's been raining the whole trip, man. Yeah, I think I put a little bit too much fuel in my truck, but we got a few days left, but man, I might catch a loco or something, or we might get, I might get another load, man, but it's not too much, man, probably about maybe 30 gallons too much or something, but oh well, like I say, man, keep an eye on your fuel, like for us, the 30th is the last day of the pay period, so I'm not gonna put no fuel in a truck. I'm gonna play it by ear. Hopefully, I get another load, man. Really need one. But we'll see, man. Stay tuned.
Man, it's raining cats and dogs, man. All you can do is put on your hazard lights, man, and ride. Keep your eye on the road, man. Morning, fellas. Just got called out to go pick up for 10 o'clock. For a load, getting this cheap food, $1.92 at the Walmart by the house, the neighborhood Walmart, man. Gotta still find that cheap price, man. We'll be going probably about 200 something mile trip, man. Nothing major, man. Slow, man. Business is real slow, man. That's why I tell people, man. With this election and just the off all field downturn, it's been a been a bad two years, man. <laughs> but uh hopefully we can just gotta hope for the best. Can't get no worse, man. In my book, it can't get no worse so just stay tuned, man. Getting a little few, man. Calculated it up, like I say. Remember I tell y'all about the last day of the pay period, man. I was on it 30. At the 12 o'clock, so I'm getting this run 9 by 10. I probably won't get another run, so I'm putting just enough, man. A trip probably like 220. So I'm gonna go say about 450, 500, put about 50, 50 gallons, man. And that's it, man. Give me a little leeway, and that's it, man. So stay tuned, man. Here to get my trailer. Here to old wonderful Holly Burke, man. Peace. Hey, little H2O, man, while I'm sitting over here at Halliburton waiting, man, you know, rush the weight, man, that's the, that's the motto over here, man, rush the weight, man, call for the truck for 10 o'clock and they still running behind, man, it's already 10.40, man, but I gotta give them the 12 before they even charge a dollar, man, but, uh, so why out here I say, Go over a little H2O, man. I got a few, uh, uh I got an email the other day. Cat hit me up about uh, the weight scale rules and stuff, man. And anything that gross over 10,000 pounds, man, truck and trail or truck, man, you got to go through the weight scale if you're doing commercial hauling, man. You know? So that's one thing. You always got to go through the scale. Another thing, like in Louisiana, man, like in Texas, if the light is blinking, the scale house is open. But in Louisiana, if the light, the flashing light saying the scale house, saying, you know, showing the scale house open or scale house closed, when the lights is flashing, that means the scale house is closed. It's the opposite of Texas for some reason. I don't know why, man. So you really got to read the signs and pay attention. And a lot of them just got the scale house open and got an open and closed sign at the body. They'll say open and closed. So, Really, man, stay in your right hand lane much as possible, man. Really pay attention when you're coming up to a scale house, man, because you don't want to run a scale house, man. That's a nice ticket, man. Easy to get put out of service. Easy to get you a bunch of tickets, man. So pay attention to that, man. And hey, man, keep your logs up to par, man. I know a lot of times when I see weight scale, man, about most of the time, a lot of places I already know when I'm coming up to one. I just glance at my weights, you know, in my log book or something, or whatever, and make sure, hey, man, I. I drew that line back right, I'm current or whatever, man, because, hey, man, <laughs> you don't want to get a ticket through the way scale, man. So uh, make sure you stay on top of your game, man. But that's basically it. You know, if anything over 10,000 pounds gross weight, you pretty much have to go through the way scale. You know, a lot of cats got uh, dually stake beds like I got. You know, if I got something in, I got to go through the way scale, man, because I'm over the 10,000 gross, man. I think our trucks weigh around. 8,000, I can't, not for sure, the exact weight, man, but I know, basically, you have to log, man, you gotta go through the uh, weight scale, especially if you're going out of out of your state, man, you know. I heard dudes, I talked to the DOT one time, he was talking about people talking about stay on the 26,000, they ain't got a log or stuff like that, but that's only if you stand in your state. When you cross outside your state, you have to get a log book, man, you know, so. You know, don't hold me to everything, man. You know, I, but as far as we do it, where I'm at in Texas, you know, I log, man. Like I said, I, I know I have to log regardless, man. Even when I do pickup loads, man, I log just to have a record of it, man. You know, say so I'm gonna count the miles anyway, so 
you know, I'm gonna log it anyway, man. So that's how I do it, just to be on the safe side, you know, but, cause, cause I have a portion plates and everything, and IFTA, so I log it, man. So, report fueling and everything, so that's me personally, you know. Like I say, I don't know what state you're in, you know, all y'all to do is really call your DOT for the state you're in and ask y'all the questions about your truck or your Pacific or whatever, you know, but that's just my understanding of how we do it pretty much in Texas, man. And everything, so. Just a little H2O I wanted to go over, man, waiting. Like I said, I'm waiting to get loaded. Another thing I wanted to go over, man. Like I said, I hope everybody, you know, winterizing their truck, checking their lights, man, putting a little electrical grease and doing all the little tedious uh maintenance man try to get them through the uh through the winter man because it's coming man that's the worst time now to work on your stuff man i know when it's hot because you can kind of control man when it's icy cold and all that stuff man that's the worst time to try to be on the trailer or something on your truck trying to really fix it so you know if it's you got time man do your fluids check everything out on your truck man do a lot of the little maintenance you can get ready for the winter man like i say i'm about to uh google the snow chain place i got and put it in the in the uh description below you know put the uh the website and stuff man i gotta look it up i can't remember i know it's snow chain or something but I'm gonna, I'm gonna look i'm gonna look, look it up and man put it in there stuff, man. So. what's happening man that's what I'm bring, bringing out here. The rig right here, they starting to the rig up, man. That's what I'm bringing right here. Really a little lightweight load. Little subs. Kit box. A few subs, man. Some little pony collars. That's basically what I'm bringing right here. That's it. Nothing coming back since the startup. They just moved the rig, so I'm waiting. Uh, the big truck already out there, so I'm finna go ahead and pull in there, see what I can get on out of here. Stay tuned. That's the rig site, man. Out here in the little cornfield. A little bit everywhere, man. Getting it together. tight location trying to do getting unloaded see where he gonna get unloaded at man ain't no sense me being in a rush that's the 18 wheeler he brought all the big tools and i'm bringing a little tools man there's a lot going on when you come to a rig like this man and hey Make sure you got everything on point. All your PPE on, man, and everything, man, because you got a, probably a lot of safety guys, two, three different companies out here, man. So, like, like they want to say, man, be on your best behavior, on your safety, man. Have all your FRCs and everything on, man. Stay tuned. Peace out. Man, I like coming through these little small towns sometimes, man. This is little Nixon, Texas, man. You see a lot of your old history, man, and heritage, man, and stuff, man. Because everything is still, like, old back in the early 1900s or whatever. Probably older than that, man. I like going through, like I say, I like going through these little small towns, man. But I'm on the way back, man. I guess I told y'all to start up, so I wasn't going to get no backhaul, man. But hopefully... The more we start up, sooner or later they'll be needing tools and stuff, man. So hopefully I go back, man. It's building a kind of, so that's a good, you know. When we build an oil company, it's better. We give a better rate than just building like Halliburton or something like that. So, man, hopefully things stay good, man. Get better, man. Like I said, I'm going through Nixon, Texas, man. They got a little construction, man, but like I say see the old post offices and stuff like that man it's a big difference man old antique shops and stuff man that's 
One thing about being a driver, a truck driver on the road, man, you see a lot of stuff, man, that a normal person probably never see in his life, man. Just history and just a lot of stuff, the speed man. speed limit is 30 miles per hour. Some of the, some of the I want to say perks of being a driver, man. I've seen a lot, man. Places I probably never went, thought about going. <laughs> a lot of beautiful lakes and everything, man. But stay tuned. Heading on back in, man. We'll see where we go, man.